Sailor's knife, lanyard knot. The marlin spike, lanyard knot. Single strand diamond knot, two strand diamond knot. And the bosun's whistle knot. Now, for those of you who are ex-Navy, don't criticise me for this. That's what I got from Ashley's book of knots. And for those that were in the Navy, we all know that the bosun's whistle was actually known as the bosun's pipe or the bosun's call. But anyway, what we're going to do today is we're going to tie these two knots here on this page here. And let me just show you here. This is what they actually look like. Obviously, as usual, Johnny's using his big fat bright cord to tie things. But you can see here, this is a smaller version. And as you can see on this end here, we've got the single version. And on the right hand side, we've got the double version of the sailor's knife lanyard knot. And that's what we're going to actually make today. And today I'm going to do it with the big thick cordage so that it's easier for you to follow. But if you want to make it in paracord, it makes a lovely key fob and paracord. In fact, if we look at this, there's some natural cordage I've used here. I've got myself a Turk's head on the end of my knife there. And then that is finally finished off with the actual lanyard not doubled. And then I've just got frayed ends on the end there. But to be honest, it's a lovely dinky little knot to make. So anyway, without further ado, and I'll see you on the other side, let's get knotting. Right, this particular knot is fantastic for off cuts of paracord. So if you've got short lengths of paracord, play with a couple of different short lengths, then you'll know what the shortest length is that you can use. But yeah, it's a great way of using up paracord so you end up with a nice little lanyard like that. Okay, so what I've got is, I've got my short length of cordage here, and the, what I've done is, I've centered it. And then when I've centered it, I'm just gonna pass it over my hand like so. So let's put that into view so that you can all see it. And then the next, as you can see here, it's going around the back of my hand like so, and the top lead is to the right hand side there of the bottom lead. And that's what we want. We want to basically now, we get hold of the left hand lead here, the bottom one. And as we get hold of it, we gently pull it up and put a twist in it. And I'll show you that as we do. It's difficult to see with the, um, my hands in the way. But you can see what I've done is I've come out from the back of my hand. I've gone round and then the cord goes underneath where it comes up from the back of my hand, like so. And what we're looking to do as well is that when we do this, we want it so that that loop is over the other strand. So the strand that's coming up the back, so if I just move that out of the way, as you can see, that strand's coming up there like so. So we're placing that loop over the strand there like so. The next thing I do is I get the working end of this right hand one here. So just get that working end. And the next thing I do is I pass it underneath the working end of the other strand. So it's going underneath there and then just pull through the excess. And then now that I've pulled through the excess, it's coming underneath there, just going around there like that. And then the next thing that I need to do is I want to pass the working end over this one here, underneath that one there in the middle of the loop, and then out over the loop again. So what I'm going to do is just get my working end and pass it down underneath that one there. There we go. And you can see now there it's going over this one here of that original loop we made. It's then going across underneath itself. So that's the lead coming out there on itself and then over the right hand side of that loop again and we pull it through. And when you've got it right, you'll know you've got it right. Let's just take the twists out of it because what I've got in my hand here now is I've got really what looks like a pretzel. I'll just pull that up a little bit there. Pull it up there and you can see I've got a pretzel shape 
Let's see, hold that like that. Bit of a pretzel shape there. But for those of you who recognize your knots, this is the carrick bend. We've actually, what I've done is, I've taken a piece of rope and I've tied a carrick bend into that piece of rope. And so my working end is going there, one working end in going in that direction, and the other working end is going in this direction here. And the next thing that I'm going to do, because we're doing the single one, we'll do the double one again in a minute. So I take the right hand, the working end, so the working end of this one comes up here like so, and what I'm doing is I'm going to bring it around so it passes around the outside of my actual loop where my hand was through, going around the outside like so, and then bring it straight up through the middle like so, and pull the excess through and keep it to just like that. And then what I'm doing now is this working end here, so I'm just gonna get that working end there, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass it, let's see, around the back like so. So there, there's where my hand was going through, through that one there. It wants to go around the back of that one there and then straight up through the middle like so. And that's it. That's done. And we've now tied the knot. Believe it or not, we've tied the knot. And now gently, as I pull up on these, just gently tease it into play and... You may have a little loop that's sticking up a bit, but all we've got to do is just go round and work that loop out, and eventually we can pull it through. And then now, as I tighten up on that, you can see here now that what we've done is we have created the knot just there. Right, now, this is the single version. Okay, and what I do, this is still loose. This is still fairly loose. I can get hold of bits here. So just gently work your way round, pulling through the excess until you get a fairly tight one, like so. So we've done this one here. So we're now going to do the doubled version. And the double version is exactly the same as the single version, except on the final step. And I'll show you that now. So here's my cordage. We might as well leave this one in here. And so what I'm going to do now is we're going to do exactly the same again. I'm going to pass it so that it runs over my hand like so. There we go. So now the top one is going slightly to the right and the bottom one is coming out there slightly to the left. The next thing I do is take the left hand one and all I do is pick it up in my hand like so and twist it. All I'm doing is just putting a twist in it there like that. So we end up with what looks like just over here, a backwards E, just the backwards letter E, little E like so. And so you can see here, it comes out from under my finger there, goes round the top there like so, round itself and then underneath itself at that point there. And now that we've done that, I'm just moving that loop there because it's now over the top of the right hand one that's coming from the back of my hand over the top that way. And so the next thing that I want to do is I want to get this working end here and then bring it underneath this one here. So take it underneath that one there and pull through the excess. And then I'll just lock that in there like so. And so you can see now, it's going around underneath the left hand working end at that point there. And next thing I want to do is I want to go over the top of that one, underneath that one there, over the top of this one. So all I'm gonna do is just go over the top, underneath that middle one, and come out on the right hand side there. And there you can see, if I take my hands out, we've now got the carrot bend has formed in our cordage. Now, this is where we deviate now. In the past one, I basically took the cords around the back of that one there, came up through the middle, then I took it round the back of that one there, up through the middle for the single one. But this one is slightly different because what we've got to do now is we still bring it around the back of this one coming up here. So this one coming up here from our other knot, 
we take it around the back like so and what we're doing is we're actually going to follow this line so this line here coming from the knot we're going to follow it so it goes through there underneath that one and so we're going to pass it underneath that one as well so bring it round underneath that one there we go and what we're doing now so you can see now it's come up there next to this one here and we're just going to keep following it all the way round till we come out at the beginning again so take it down through that one follow it round so exactly parallel to the one before and then round there bring it so you can see now here if I just straighten that out a bit you can see now here it's going to follow this one round there so it's got to come up there so I'll bring it round so it comes up at that point there and then now that it's come up that point there it's following this round here and you can see this one now passes under two so where it passes underneath two there that is where we finish so bring it round take it underneath the two like so whoops a bit tight and it's now coming out alongside the other lead and so there you go there's my one lead coming out the short lead now and there is my this is the long lead is the left hand one of those two right now we do exactly the same again for this lead so the long lead that we've got left what we do is we bring it around so what we're doing is just put my fingers through there so what we're doing is we're going to bring it around and then we're going to go up at this point here so where my where that loop is to the next knot at this point here I'm going to bring it up and pass it underneath those two there so up underneath those two there pull it round pull it through like so get rid of some of the excess there we go and now you can see it's coming up at this point here and it wants to follow this one parallel on this one here so all I'm going to do is just take it down go underneath two like so bring it up the other side because it's following exactly the same as this one here we then go just pull the excess through a bit so it's coming out here at this point here so we want to go round underneath that working end there bring it round up here so it's following that lead round like so and then you can see here now it's coming out at that point there it wants to follow this one so this one wants to follow that one so we take it around underneath those two underneath those two like so and now we are back at the beginning of there and you can instantly see that we've got a bit of a mushroom starting to appear here now now the next thing what we want to do is we now want to take both those working ends and both those working ends okay so take this one here first this working end comes out here we follow this one round so follow that one round until you get just past this one here that's coming from the knot so follow that round like so and then once you've followed it round poke it straight up through the middle of our knot so poke it round up through the middle and just gently pull the excess through we've now got this working end here is coming out so that's my working end coming out there we follow this one round follow it round until we get to the other lead that runs to our knot at that point there we follow it round bring it round just past that lead there and then bring it up through the middle and then you can gently pull and now we have tied that knot and all we need to do now is just go round and gently pull through the excess like so until your knot is nice tight and symmetrical there we go and you can see here now we've almost got it in shape I've got a loop here of too much excess so what I'm going to do now is just pull that through 
work my way round and then pull that down. And you can see now, as I pull up on that, it still needs a bit more work, but there's no point in watching me just tighten it up. But you can see here now that at the top here, we have got the single strand sailor's knife lanyard knot. And here we have the doubled version. Okay, and so that's it there. And to be honest, it works beautifully in paracord because paracord has enough give in it. It makes, and it, it just, it looks really good. And then when you've got this hanging on the end of your knife, it's a wonderful thing to have. You know, I mean, this is done with natural cordage. And as you can see, it works well with natural cordage as well. We've got the double bosun's lanyard knot there and a Turk's head just above it. And if you want to know how to do the Turk's head, I've got a video in my library on the Turk's Head and I'll put a link into that below as well. So anyway, once again, thanks very much for watching. Please do leave me comments down below. Tell me your experiences. Tell me about your knots, whatever you want. Just let's have a chat online and I'll see you again next time. So anyway, thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you hated it, but I'll see you again next time. Bye bye.